Hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening to all of you. And I am here to present to you my presentation, my research I got from, from my past online class, my distance learning. Actually, I already posted the, this uh, slides, this presentation to slideshare.net and I got 2,000 plus viewer. Enjoy this one. Teaching strategies for exceptional learners. When we say exceptional learners, it's all about it is not only those having a disabilities or those students who cannot perform well in the class, but uh, exceptional learners can be also those students who have a problem in understanding or comprehension and also those students who were genius so today i am teaching you about uh, learning disabilities exceptional learners and junior students so this is my final presentation to my professor professor dr emperia Next slide. This is my certificate I got from Addison, working with students with special education. So, it is strategies for genius. So, for me, strategies for genius is can probably use homeschooling activities. And, you know, some of them were, were so uh, researcher. They were, they like to research they want to advance themselves they keep on surfing in the internet and presto they got it so probably you can use the blend space in teaching so it is more participative to your students you know blend space is also good for students who cannot understand well inside the class only writing and they are not good in writing they want to listen and listen and see some pictures and those students considered as conceptualized to them so especially if you're handling science and technology physics what else involving science you can use conceptual method and homeschooling activities nowadays it's not only at home but you can do that online or even in the homeschooling you can provide themselves a, a video before you start or a picture or it can be a, an ice drawing that can help them to get motivated another one is test first if she or he can do it alone so you can integrate the dick and carry model in which you can do some a little of pre-test for the students then if they got it you can continue or you, you know what the strategies you can use but sometimes in online class you no longer use that especially if they were already old students adults so another one is more abstract and conceptual approach that's why i'm taught I'm talking about the conceptual approach. When you say conceptual, you can post the picture, a lot of pictures on the board, or you can put some some samples on the internet, slides. Then you ask the, the students, what is it all about? So when you see this picture, what can, what can you imagine? Or what is the meaning, okay? What is the meaning of this, if you see the, this picture? Okay. research activities essays and reflection papers for example if you're teaching English if you know the students are are already good in English you can do some advanced research on idioms or uh, like a stories that is not familiar with them then that time you can get their attention and reflection papers so reflection papers especially in universities they were using reflection papers to to know the students their psychological approach and 
reflection papers re really help students in for example in values education or you can use that in english and even in other languages subject or you can use that in science or mathematics it's it's how you give them a test and it's also how you give them an, an activity that could be probably use the reflection papers sometimes you can use that when you're having your social studies and so on so more activities you can post more activities more answer more rapport more oral communication so the objectives for today is about to be able to differentiate the exceptional learners to students with learning disabilities like what i've said already the differences so show in lecture about how to become an effective teacher for student with impairments or learning disabilities approach and sample of eff effective teaching by telling a case study role of the teacher as well as parents to students with learning disabilities or exceptional learners so exceptional learners with learning disabilities So, exceptional children and youths are those who require special education and related services if they are to realize their full human potential. So, you can give them a test on the, so that you know if they were exceptional, if they were uh, slow, average, or above average. So, they require special education because they are markedly different from most children. So, in one or more of the following ways, they may have mental retardation. That's what I'm talking about. Learning disabilities, emotional or behavioral disorder, physical disabilities. So that's what I'm talking. And a CSEM. So as we go further after this video, I'm going to post again about a CSEM. And this is another one of my research. And, and I'm just trying to make program for this my own program for my homeschool so most of my student not most i got an experience of teaching with some traumatic experience in a, in a kid like for example the parents were separated the, the father have a different families and so on so it could affect the the absorption of learning of the students so if there's an impaired side so you should know that or special gifts or talents so you should not only rely to the student that you don't know how to speak in english maybe they have some skills they can listen they can write so learning disabilities so are those students also special attention which focus on mental and behavior they might probably disturb mentally or emotionally examples so, if the students have dyslexia, now what's dyslexia? Dyslexia, the, these are the students who cannot focus due to traumatic experiences or can grasp, grasp what the teacher's feeling. What the teacher's telling, sorry. So, this graphia are, so, go back, dyslexia. Um, when you're teaching learning disabilities with dyslexia, you can teach them having the recording because they cannot focus maybe they have some traumatic experience from the past historical events so you can also have the video youtube or you can do like this you can use a blend space collaborative teaching that's one i'm uh, i'm not, so one of my students like the collaborative teaching and keeps on looking on my video recorded already if you're teaching some other in the some other countries you can use this one uh, especially i had an experience teaching student from other country who, which have an experience of war or so on so that's traumatic so that's why they need recorded or video that can help them grasp what you're teaching especially those students that cannot uh, those students that are not photographic memory or do not have a photographic memory 
So, dysgraphia. So, when we say dysgraphia, uh, these are the students or those students with disability in writing. They cannot write easily. So, when they write, it's something like understandable, not understandable. And you can probably see them uh, disorganized in their notebooks. They can write on the back or they can write on the middle. So, they don't know when and where is their notes. So they don't know where to write when they, they when the teacher teaching they just got some paper they write but cannot when they go home they cannot understand what they're writing because it's something like difficult to understand so that's one point another one is discalcuta so when you say discalcuta or discalcuta these are the students or those students with difficult in mathematical problems so, even though you have the calculator, they, they can easily forget those things. Or even uh, those kids, you keep on trying to show them the numbers. When they, see, when they have some phobia, when they see the numbers, oh my god, I don't want to study again. So, they have like that connotations of having a trauma, looking the numbers. So, learning strategies to aid in to aid an exceptional learners. So like I've said, exceptional learners are not only students who have a problem in writing. So it could probably disabilities and exceptional learners can even above average students can have some problems in this gap. Yeah, they don't want to write. Okay. So they don't know how to write well can encourage them so maybe they are they have the multilingual you know Gardner says that we have the multiple intelligence some are linguistic mathematical sceptical and so on so so this is the guide question so what is learning strategies why is it we need to develop such strategies is it beneficial if so, then how can I implement it? So, disappearance or if of exceptional learners have a big role for their cognitive and social development. When we say cognitive, it's more on mental. Social development is more on uh, talking to other people. So, if your kids or if you're a parent, you keep on telling bad things to your kids, it could lead to some... Uh, social development they don't want to interact with other people or something like that so what are the latest approach nowadays for this exceptional learners so this an innovative education will help it so so what do you think is the right way so when you say innovative education it's something to do with the educational technology you can use the ebooks some you know internet is very important in studying with i mean to to give them uh, or some technologies so it is a way of having innovative education so these students needs most organized teacher so if you're organized teacher you have the the iep for them or individual individual educational plan it could it could lead to to a good performance to these exceptional learners. So education is useless without learning, of course, and education is a continuous process. Exactly. So learning is the central goal of the total school operations and teaching is the school's basic production techniques. So strategies is something to do with the learning approach and it is the factors that influence learning so learning is the process by which an activity originates or ch or is changed through reacting to an encountered situation so you're learning if there's a process something that improves your speaking test or your listening test or reading test in English or some other subjects so a strategy is a device used to help students remember the lesson so if I am a student I would rather um, look on the video 
but sometimes I want my teacher to write and have uh, give me a lot of activities so in that way you as, as a teacher will no longer do a lot of things instead you prepare yourself prepare your instructional materials and you also have your your test that's the basic and most important thing so if you have the test if you have the instructional materials if you have the textbook that could help them improve themselves then it could lead to learning so uh, strategies you can use the device you can use the internet we have a lot of ways to make it more innovative we have the move note blend space collaborative teaching webinar and so on so it might be a step-by-step -step procedures to complete the order and it might be the audio or the audio visual device so it could be recorded some people or some students would like to download on the internet like the google apps they learn so those 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 things that could help them can also be used in the classroom so you can download google apps or some application or audio visual that you can play inside the classroom especially if you're teaching english you can use that one because you know we are not that perfect so we need other devices to to assist us especially if you're teaching the whole hour one hour straight oh my god you're killing yourself talking and talking like what i'm doing right so this is 80 slides so so how to waste on how okay this is on how to help a student makes a research paper with exceptional attitude so score a so we have to select a subject create categories o obtain resources r read and take notes and e evenly organize notes and a apply the writing strategies so if you're a teacher and you also encountered a dysgraphia you probably have an extension class like what i'm doing right now i'm having my extension class and since i am not a classroom teacher i am only a tutor and also i'm researching and finishing everything right now so i was trying to to use the internet and research and i was i am no longer using a lot of resources i'm i'm using my own resources that i download and have my license to use it so i have to check this one only select a subject and if you have the subject already you create categories one by one level by level so obtain resources read and take notes evenly organize notes and apply so if you are having your online class you will no longer organizing the notes you will only organizing your students and their performance so it's very easy for them to check because you have the checklist next so these are the examples of strategies for students with exceptionalities so student with exceptionalities so this one is designed to help students decode words so fish if you're teaching some kids fish find the rhyme identify the rhyme say the rhyme hook the new house so this is very important if you're teaching preschool and even grade one or grade two so the following strategy will help with word problems so we have the search the word problem so you can have the puzzle and another one translate the words into an equation in picture form answer the problem review the solution another thing is i already post that on the internet and one of the result that i got from youtube is that if you are teaching those students who cannot speak well you can use the pop to talk so there's a lot of application in the internet you can download and you can use that one for your students especially if you're teaching private school and most of the students do not want to talk you can tell us that the, the the parents that they can also use the, the tap to talk or if you if you're teaching on a public school you can also use your tablet 
or applications on the tablet then use the powerpoint on oh, no the overhead projector uh, lcd then you, they can see what happening you can tap and talk so when you tap that one maybe you can check that one on my slide share that net. so i can post it um on youtube no i will just tell you the link rather so the next one is so implement the learning strategies in your classroom so you can like what i've said you pre-test and discuss so it is first important as the students so if you have the test or the examination for them you can use that one to assess them especially if you're teaching english you can probably test first how to identify the differences of the diction or how those from other countries speak so they have differences so you can teach that one or if they were only a uh, grade school level you can teach them from basic from noun pronoun verb and so on so describe the strategy so during this step the students is introduced to the strategy and from perform of the spe specific information such as when to use the strategies and how to apply it is given step by step so make it step by step do not uh, come in a hurry instead give them an instructional materials so model model the strategy so for this step an example of the strategy in uses is given this is done through direct instruction so you can use direct instruction if you're having your your listening type you can you can read uh, a literature a simple one and then let them answer so each step is review out loud as the example given so we have the verbal rehearsal of the strategies the students should be able to verbally discuss the strategy so they should be able to describe each step as well as given this is good for mathematics even in science or i think it's applicable to all of the subject but most necessarily step by step could could use in math practice with controlled materials so if you're teaching mathematics if you can use some some example um your or what what else um, if you're a biology teacher you're using a clay to demonstrate to them how how the mitosis or meiosis react from anaphase to telophase but you can also use this one to to students in grade one who would like to create their imagination in arts and also practice the reflex in their hands so in order to allow them to learn the technique without frustration so they can play and learn so it's it's based on the level practice with grade level material so if you're teaching mathematics in grade one uh, k2 k3 k4 it should be applicable for them for their age so if you're teaching already grade 6 teach them but sometimes in hand especially if you're teaching english from non-native english speaker you can teach them from basic like k1 k2 k3 k4 k5 k6 up to the highest level you can start from if you're teaching you know it's different how british english Australian and American English speak so you can also use some ways on how you can start from basic if you're if you're looking on the YouTube you can find some some teachers there uh, I, f I found watching Alex and Emma in ingve.com so you can see how they teach they were all in the level form because they know their audience are not that uh, a native speaker of English so their target is really for some non-native American or non-native English speakers so they base it on the level 
So, learning to generalize the technique. So, you should, right after you, you teach them, you generalize. Why is this happening? Why did I, I let you use the clay as a model for biology? Because I want you to create a picture of how the cells developed. What's the difference between meiosis and mitosis? Or you can use the, the in generalizing, make it short, make it concise. So this is my references. And this one I got also from the internet and YouTube. So we have the summary. The main points from the modules are as follows. Learning is generally defined as relative permanent changes. Learning can be physical, social, emo um, emotional, or cognitive. So, it can be physical. If you're teaching them uh, related to physics, it could be physical. But sometimes, it can also be social. If you're teaching English, uh, it is based on the strategies. It is based on the learning strength. And it is also from your subject you're teaching and from the title or the theme. Example, if you're teaching English integrated to values education. So, it is more on social and emotional. And it is also related to cognitive development. So, learning is not the same as teaching. Okay, Learning is the result of what the teacher Teaching. So, two of the main two of the main learning theories are behaviorism and constructivism. When we say behaviorism, it's more on behavior. Bandura. Constructivism, uh, it's more on how the students construct a certain reaction. So it is also a result. It's more on physical. Behavior is more on emotional and social. Constructivism, physical, and cognitive. So behaviorisms emphasize the link that can often be observed among overt behaviors and the circumstance of the behavior. Constructivism emphasize the inner thoughts of the learner. So next, special education. This is a very long one, so I don't have to to teach you about this one you can read this one on my my slideshare.net so you can learn about how to use the top to top and other materials maybe i can send you the link for all the information so this is special education that address the individual differences requirements of the service special needs so that's what I told you a, a while ago. Speech and language disorder, intellectual disabilities, and attention deficit hyperactive. So these are the students who have ADHD. They, they want to become more active. They are more kinesthetic. And aside from that, they are super hyper. They really want to act. Not only on verbal, but they want to, to make some action on it. So if you belong as the ADHD, so there's a lot of ways on how to minimize that attention deficit disorder. Mm -hmm. Let's go back. So these are the the special education I got from Alison.com. So this is the case study. So this is in the United States. Maybe you can read. That's the law. I will no longer describe that one. So, so this is the good thing they have. So, individual with disability education, they are free appropriate education from birth to age 21. Due process, per evaluation, and performance, in spite of disability. So, it doesn't it it is not good that you categorize the student that this one is having a learning disability this one is a deaf 15 percent this one is like that it's not good 
education in the less restrictive environment and an individualized educational plan. So, IEP. So, IEP is very important. So, this new laws affected teacher work in the classroom and had a big impact on education in general in the United States. So, special education and legalization. So, this one. Will a student with disability disrupt the class? That's the question of the teacher. Will the student interfere with converting the curriculum? Will the student be teased by the classmates? So most necessarily, those things, concern of the teacher, really happens inside the classroom. Special education is education that addresses the individual differences and requirements of the student with special needs. So we have individual differences. So you cannot say this student is really not good in this kind of subject. Maybe that students have a different, uh, different types of way of learning. She wants to learn having a sounds, or he is more kinesthetic, more conceptual, sceptical, and so on. So be familiar on that. As a teacher, you have to be keen of observer. But it is not necessarily happens in online class because you cannot observe them. But during the talk, if you're using a Skype class, you can see them. You can look on their eyes. Do not stare. Just look on their eyes. And you will know them. Learning disabilities account to about a half of the special education. So I already told you about that. So this one. Introduction to learning disabilities. I already showed this to you. So a learning disability should show itself as a major discrepancy between students' ability and some feature of achievement. This is very long, so learning problem could be mental retardation. What is it? So, not considered a learning disability if it stems from physical, sensory, or motor handicaps, from generalist intellectual impairment. So, that's what mental retardation. The children with learning disabilities are the learning problem left over after these are other possibilities are accounted for or excluded. So, you know, nowadays, um, especially in America, they were having homeschooling organization because they teach they teach their parents to how on how to teach their kids. And sometimes it's really good because you know how much you can make a lesser money to spend for education. You go you go to your school and you save more money, save more time less traffic and so on so typically a student with a learning disability has not been helped by a teacher ordinarily effort to assist the student when he or she falls behind academically yes so most importantly though a learning disability relates to a fairly specific area of academic learning example example student may be able to read and compute that's what i'm talking we can read so, dysgraphia, dyscalcuta, or cannot compute and cannot able to write. So, what is the teacher's responsibility for this? So, the responsibilities of the teacher and trainers are also detailed along with the individual educational plan. So, it is IEP. So, I have an example for that. Maybe, maybe you can uh, see it on my Facebook page. What's an IEP? So, the course described the most frequent disability encountered in the mainstream classroom. So, we have learning disability, attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, intellectual disabilities, behavioral disorders, and physical disability. These things are very difficult, especially if you're in a classroom and you have 60 students. Oh my God, I'm killing myself. So, if you have only 7, 15, 20 students, okay. After that, it's very difficult. You know why? You have to address 
their difficulties, their disabilities. Especially if you're teaching special education, much better if you only teach 15. You can, you can, you can make them better, better students because you can observe them very well. You can see how they react. You can see them. You can observe well. So the course. The course provides key information about each of these disabilities and describes practical strategies on how to assist teach students with these disabilities. So this, this free online education course will be of a great interest to professionals in the educational sector who would like a greater knowledge and understanding of working with the student. This is teacher's responsibility I got from the internet. But I have also another teacher's responsibility for this. As a teacher, we should always be humble. We should always be more patient. Extend ourselves to that kind of students. Because, of course, we also have our own family. So, you know, that's why maybe that's the reason why a lot of teacher doesn't have a, pet, a partner. Because they, they, they love their the students very well. So changes in educational legalization have affected the work, teach, of work of teachers by creating three new expectations. So listen. Number one is to provide alternative methods of assessment. So you can provide alternative assessment. It could be written or something like different types of assessment can be oral and so on for students with disabilities to arrange a learning environment that is normal or at least restrictive as possible make it normal let them let them feel that they are the normal students so number three is to participate on or participate in creating individual education plan so i don't have an example here but maybe on my i maybe on my facebook page uh, i just post it on the the post it on the on my wall and you can see how it works i don't know if you understand how to write the iep but most necessarily i know that your all of you all of the viewers were professionals doctors psychologists and i'm only a mad student mad student Number three is to participate in creating IEP, okay, for students with disabilities. That one expectation. So in the special education, provide alternate assessment. So alternate could be oral. The next one is written. The next one reflection, uh, field trip, and so on. So it could ins it could be more on counseling, talking. So assessment is a major reason why teachers give tests in assignment, for example, and why they listen carefully to the quality of students' comments during class discussion. So that's the responsibility of special education. Holding a pencil, you can see how they write. Hearing in question clearly, focusing on teacher, recording an answer in time even when he or she knows the answer. Concentration on task in the presence of other people. Answering a question at the face needed by the rest of the class. I got a student who doesn't want to listen because he is above average. So what, what I did is record his answers and then after he answers I give it back to him his answers so what he told me is oh my god I'm not that good in speaking he said and he realized that he is wrong and after that he's not that very impulsive very arrogant can he also learn on his own mistakes? Answering a question at the 
space needed by the rest of the class okay so that's one you can check that on my teacher responsibility okay i already told you about that so you can make portfolios so so that you can you know your students comments you have devising system to observe the student regularly so if you have the iep you just check and have the remarks so the, the categories the level so what is the activity you use or period one period two period three period four so another one recruiting help from teacher assistant so you can ask teacher assistant so arrange at least restrictive environment make it restrictive so define as the combination of setting that involves in the regular classroom and school program as much as possible another one is so this this one is as an example a young child with a mild cognitive disability may spend the majority of their time in a regular classroom working alongside and playing with a non-disabled classmate and relying on a teacher assistant for help when needed an, an individual with a similar disability in high school, however, might be assigned primarily to access specially intended for slow learners, but nonetheless participate in some school-wide activities alongside non-disabled students. So, number expectation three, create an IED. Okay, or I already told you about that. The classroom teacher... Uh, this team should include the classroom teacher, the resource or special teacher, the student parents or guardians. So it is not only involve the teacher, the, the parents should also involve on this kind of case. So a school administrator or the principal or vice principal, other external professional, it could be psychologist, physician or a speech therapist. So, you can use the apps, the one that you click and they can talk. So, it, it is very helpful. In that application, you can say burger. When they click that burger, when they click this one, I am hungry. I am hungry. Today is Monday. So, they will say something. So, they will learn. So, when they listen, they can talk now. Sometimes those students want to study individually. So when they were alone, they can listen to some music and they memorize it. Or sometimes they surf in the internet and it's easy for them to, to learn. So IEP, this, this is an example of IEP. Student, the address, birth date, so grade level, and support test you can put the support test so this is an example of IEP so this is the introduction this Im image shows a simple imaginary individual educational plan so the actual vision or format of an IEP so it varies from country to country so the core details one okay support team this one strength of needs resources and so on so the value of inclusive education i.e. so including a student with disability in regular classroom like what i've said do not let them feel that they are special education so you can let them go with the regular students so valuable for everyone so the students with disability themselves tend to experience richer educational environment both socially and academically. So classmates of students with disability also experience a richer educational environment. So the value of inclusive education. So uh, inclusive education is is more on on environment with the regular students. Teacher also experience benefits from including students with disabilities in regular classroom. You know why? Because most notable overall benefit is an increased focus on diversity among students. Instead of separating them always or every day, the teacher will have a lesser 
uh, lesser time to to create more on the special education so the presence of student with disability reminds everyone student as well as teacher that everyone is truly unique so we have the individual differences whether or not they are officially designated as having disabilities so the value of inclusive education as you notice even in college it happens we have individual differences the classroom teacher the best strategy may be simple to understand how categories disabilities are defined so disability encountered by teacher most frequently are learning disability adhd intellectual disability behavior disorder physical disability and sensory impairments uh, those students who are deaf Actually, not all of them are deaf. Maybe a little of, for example, you have the 100% on the left. They could hear only on, on their left ear. Um, about 5%. And the other right ear, they can hear 100%. So, summary. So, special education. That the, okay, special education is education that address the individual differences and requirements of students with special needs. So, changes in education law have affected the work of teachers and the context of, it, of students with disability assessment refers to gathering information about the student in order to identify the strength of the student and to decide what is special education support may need the student's need. So, an individual educational plan or IEP should be created by a team of individuals who know the student's strength and needs. So, it describes students' current social and academic strength as well as students' social or academic needs. Teaching students with intellectual disabilities. Okay, number one, give more time and practice the usual to and practice the news well to the student embed activities or you can embed url on your portal class and watch let them watch the video that is related to your teaching include the student in both social and academic activities so teaching student with intellectual dis disability strategy one give more time and practice the news well to the student Example, a student may know that 2 plus 3 equals 5, but need help applying this math fact to a real object. You can use a ball pen, you can use sticks, or so on. So, the teacher teaching assistant might need to show the student that 2 pencil plus 3 pencil make a 5 pencil. Must. Okay, starting with giving appreciation, appropriate praise. So, if you have a student, let them uh, hear your appreciation. So, appreciation is very important for the development of children. So, setting expectation too low actually deprives students with an intellectual disability of rightful opportunities to learn. A serious ethical and professional mistake. Unfortunately, in many curriculum areas, there are already existing materials that are simplified yet appropriate for older students. So, special education teacher specialists can often help in finding them and devising effective ways of using them. So, I will not make it so much longer. So, you can view this one. So that one is very important, foster acceptance and helpfulness. Classmate learn about school, in, it's part, partly about providing opportunity for everyone, so make it more fair for them. So an intellectual disability is significant limitation in student cognitive function in daily adaptive behaviors. So I already showed this to you. So teaching behavioral disorder. Teaching students with behavioral disorder, so most challenges of the teachers 
in teaching students with behavioral disorder are related to classroom management. For example, if you see your students keep on laughing, keep on uh, mimicking on the back, and while you're writing, you can talk to him in an appropriate ways. Like, for example, um, excuse me, can we talk later? But do not humiliate your student on, on some other student. Even if it's a kid or especially in adult. So, strategies for teaching students with behavioral disorder include identifying circumstances that trigger inappropriate behavior, teaching of interpersonal skill explicitly, and disciplining a student fairly. So, make it fair. Make it fair when you teach your students. Teaching students with behavioral disorder. So, physiologically effects including illness, fatigue, hunger, and side effects. Like what I've said, Know your students' needs by Maslow. So, they have the individual needs. So, dealing with a disruption is more effective if the teacher can identify the specific circumstances. Teaching students with behavioral disorder, factors that can trigger could be physical features of the classroom, including the classroom, if it's very cold, if it's very warm, so it could lead to something understandable for them they cannot observe the learning so facilities is very important the chairs being exceptionally uncomfortable for sitting so if you're teaching online it's okay they can access your teaching wherever they are and they can answer all the questions you post later so it's more on take home but the problem is, do you know that they are the one answering it? But if in some other uh, online class, they have time, time, time frame, so it could probably they are the one knowing, uh, answering it. So instructional choices or strategies that frustrate learning include restricting student choices on Dolly, giving instruction that are unclear. So if you're giving an instruction, for example, you give them uh, instruction on online that you will submit, they will submit that on your email. Or if you have the portal class, they can answer it directly to your online class and you can check it. But you did not make it clear for them to answer the question. So make it clear. If you have 10 choices, you can put choose only 3 to 5 or 3 answers from the 10 choices. So, make it clear. Maybe on the 10 choices, they can only choose 1 because you did not entail what is your instruction. Or you did not make it clear. For example, you're giving... a a mathematics problem you want them to round off to the nearest tenths okay preventing students from asking questions when they need help so that's bad you don't you don't want to be interrupt of your own business or your own work inside the classroom even your students want to ask you some questions and ask some help from you so teaching students with behavioral disorder so by identifying the specific variables often associated with disruptive behavior in a student so it is easier to devise ways to prevent the behaviors by avoiding the trigger and another one is teaching the student alternative but quite specific ways so like what i've said you can do some Alternative ways, visual, um, rapport, you know, some technology nowadays is very important. You can use some CDs that is very informative. You can use some playing, a doll or something. 
or some activities that will let them enjoy communicate with others. So teaching students with this behavioral disorder, so teaching interpersonal skill explicitly. Simple courtesies, for example, remembering to say please or thanks. Mom, thank you. Mom, goodbye. Good morning, ma'am. So may not be totally unknown, but maybe an unpracticed and seem unimportant to the student. So you can use that. You can teach them um, values, being polite. So this could also be the case with body language. For example, making eye contact. If you're talking to them, be sure you have the eye contact or sitting up to listen to a teacher rather than slouching and looking away. These skills can be taught in ways that do not make them part of a punishment. So you can let them, a simple way, you know, you have to respect. I have a student, keep on asking, he's very arrogant and asking me a lot. And I told him that Okay, let's talk about yourself. He wants to speak. He wants to learn speaking in English. So, I told him. I asked him about behavior. Do you think behavior is very important? Yes. And I asked him. What's the difference between a polite and kind? Is there any differences? Yes. And I keep on asking and I keep on asking. Then later, his behavior is now commonly, you know, become more appreciated for me because he is now having some courtesies to the teacher. Next, teaching students with behavioral disorders. So, read or assign books. You can read, let them read. And you can let them listen to some news and ask them or ask them about the latest technology and another one is let them play play is very important to the development of the children oh, I'm getting sleepy the trick wire card choose language to succeed example mother may I like 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 a game that is related to teaching and a game that can let them study also design programs that link an older student or adult from the community as a partner to the student at risk for behavior problems so that's all i hope you enjoy this one so fairness and disciplining your student is very important, IEP. So, this one. The plan can serve as a guide in devising daily activities and approaches with students. It should be kept in mind that since an IEP is similar to legal agreement among a teacher, professional, and a student. So, although such department may seem unlikely, a student with a behavior disorder may sometimes be exploiting enough to make them think. So, a teacher must remember that every IEP guarantees the student and student's parent due process before an IEP can be changed. So, in practicing this means consulting with everyone. You're like a doctor. You have your plan. You have the prescription. So, you should know that also. Teaching student with behavioral disorder. So, instead of increasing the volume of punishment because she or he had some misdemeanor inside the classroom, a better is approach. A better approach is for the teacher to keep careful records. You can take it down of the student behavior and his or her own response. So these records should document the reasonable of the rules responses. So after you have the counseling, you can just observe them. There's a problem. If you cannot to really discipline inside the classroom, you can ask your principal. So by having these records, collaboration with parents and other professionals can be more productive and fair-minded. So you can talk to the parents. It can increase other confidence in the teacher's judgment about the student's need. Maybe 
because the student have a problem in their family. So, in the long term, more effective collaboration leads both to better support and to more learning of the student. You can talk to the parents' mother, your assignment, but it is related to, to her daughter or son. Um, I'm using Remind.com to text my student and also their parents if the parents um, brought to me. So I kept on texting the parents if they, have, they, they were in my class as tutor. So tutor is different from a classroom teaching. But when I was teaching in a classroom, I see to it that I text all my students. I, I have the numbers. So I have the record, I have the index card, I have the address. So during the time I can I can let them tell I, I mean I can let them go home if it's necessary or I can let their parents uh, monitor what is going on with them. So I text their parents, mom or your kids is like this can we talk for a while? It is not that making them so personal, just a little talk. So behavior disorder are a diverse group of conditions in which students chronically perform highly inappropriate behavior. So available statics suggest that only about one to two percent of students or perhaps less have true behavioral disorder, a figure that is only about one half or one-third of the frequency for intellectual disability. So that's all for today. I'm already discussing for almost one hour. Maybe you can check this one to my YouTube channel. No, not YouTube channel. But you can check my slides on SlideShare. That. Yeah. So I hope you enjoy my time with me. So this one is very important, teaching students with hearing loss. So make charts and diagram wherever appropriate to illustrate what he is saying. Look directly. Gestures point to keywords. Actually, I have a student online class. He is a deaf and he wants me to write and write and write. And it's really tiring. So what I'm thinking is that making a PowerPoint presentation for him. So, I don't know if it really works. Do the student in the community of the classroom. Teacher should recruit one or more classmate to assist translating oral comments that the student may have missed. Learn few basic important sign language. Thank you. How are you? Teach a few basic important signal. Teaching student with visual impairment. Of course, make it important that Place the student on in front of the classroom if they were nearsighted and put them on the back if they were farsighted. So, ask the, the parents. Hi, that's all for today and I hope you enjoyed your time with me. So, I will no longer make it longer for you. So, the three main strategy for teaching students with visual impairment, take advantage of student residual vision, use non-visual information, and include the student in the community of the classroom. So, we have here a lot of disability. Mm -hmm. A learning disability. Teaching student with disability. So that's all for today. I think I you enjoy your time with me and hope um, you can browse my slides slides on the internet on slideshare.net and follow me on Twitter at Laura Belribaya and goodbye.